this video on Tommy! So, you think the spoony worm could escape me so easily? Think again, maggot! This show is re-banished to the black hole, where you will play Pumpkinhead's Revenge for all eternity. Or, until you win. Whoa. Where am I? Ah! Ah! Nostalgia Critic? What are you doing here? I'm not the Nostalgia Critic. Or am I? Well, yeah, you are. Or am I? But what is this place? What are we doing here? You must be Pumpkinhead in order to leave this dimension. Or do you? Oh, come on! This is all because I raped you in Spooning with Spoonie 2, isn't it? Yes. Or is it? No, no, it, it is. Yeah, but I can't beat that game, it's impossible! You should get that Lord Cat guy. He can beat anything. Or can he? Prove. Um, wait, what'd you call me? No, no, that's just what I say when I disappear. Poof. Your eternal failure only serves to bore me, Spoony Worm. I have decided to send you help. Because you see, even if you beat Pumpkinhead, there is no victory. There is only more madness! <laughs> this is not my beautiful house, and you're not my beautiful wife. Spoony, what's going on? Well, I really need your help getting through uh, Bloodwing's Pumpkinhead's Revenge, and since you're the Until We Win guy, I really need your help getting through this thing. You know, assuming there's no strawberries involved, please. Silence, maggot! You will help the Spoony Worm finish this game, or you will spend the rest of your lives in the black hole. Well, so if, if this is the black hole, it's not too bad. Mm, not too bad at all. It's comfortable, nice bed. It's actually got kind of a pastelish, pastoral theme. Would you shut up and beat the game already, maggots? Amateurs. So, Pumpkinhead? This is the game we have to beat. Good God Almighty. <laughs> oh, believe me. There is no God. There is only Pumpkinhead, and he will be the death of us. Unless you, you can beat it. You're the only one who possibly can. Come on, man, you beat Bayou Billy! You've gotta help me! Bayou Billy had a stick. You have jack shit in Pumpkinhead. I guess we still have a little fun, though. Right, uh, well, there are three key elements of this level. The videos, the chests, and the monsters. The game's like a hybrid between an FMV, an adventure game, and an FPS. It's just not a very good hybrid. The first part of the level is easy, and I think you already covered that one, Spoondog. Spooned what? Uh, never mind. Yeah, you collect the Tantanic Crystals in the Underworld by jumping into the vortex left behind by the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man's retarded stepchildren. You use the crystals to get in the movies and collect items from the movies by clicking around. But then, some unseen spectral children keep accusing me of theft for doing exactly what the instructions told me to do. They keep stealing my inventory, and I give up in frustration. Okay, we got that. That's cool. But what in the hell am I supposed to do after that? You think like an adventure game designer. Think of it like this. You've got an inventory of items, and they all do something. It's just a matter of figuring out what you're supposed to do with them. So things like the map will show you a map when you use it, and keys let you open chests, right? Well, that's all well and good, but what in the hell am I supposed to do with a vial of blood? And why do these children keep stealing my inventory? Well, the vial of blood shows you where secret entrances are. Oh, okay. Um, small question. Why does the vial of blood show you secret entrances on a map? Spoons, you're not thinking like an adventure game designer. All right, close your eyes and pretend you're Roberta Williams. Now listen, I know you don't have the breasts for it, but pretend you're her with some serious brain damage. You have a shovel. What do you do with it? I, I dig a hole and I bury this flaming turd in it. No, 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 dude. What is the shovel made out of? A wooden handle and a metal spade. 
no, 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 no. You gotta think like a designer. It's a stick with a piece of metal at the end. What do you do with that? Ah, I swing it really hard and hit shit with it. Exactly. All right, all right, look, we're not getting anywhere doing this. So this is like an adventure game, right? Those games are based around the items you have. So what other items are in this festering pile of slug vomit? Well, there's a candle and flashlight, and you use those to light dark paths. And the hunter's license lets you see enemies on the map, and that comes in pretty handy later on. Oh, I get it now. So the watch stops time. Yeah, they're kind of ripping off Castlevania there. And the fire extinguisher puts out fires. Uh... Not exactly. Oh, so you use it to bash monsters in the head? <laughs> no, actually, you use it to recover health. Wait, what? Yeah, you use a fire extinguisher in the zone of nothingness. It's covered in lava, so you gotta freeze it to walk over the lava. You gotta freeze the lava, that, which which fills the zone of nothingness, the, the void of nothingness. Wait, wait, okay, so the fire extinguisher freezes somehow the sea of superheated magma so you can walk over it, shoot the bouncing globes that restore your health, and this makes no sense. It makes less sense than fucking Blitzball, man. <laughs> but at least Blitzball was integral to the plot. <laughs> uh, well, moving on. Uh, anyway, you're also going to need a mirror and a newspaper to beat this level. And then there's the voodoo doll, a vile, horrible piece of equipment that you absolutely must get in the first level, otherwise you can't complete the game. And oh, by the way, you don't need the voodoo doll just yet, you need it for the second level. There's some backwards thinking going on here that I just cannot wrap my brain around. Spoonie, you might not be able to wrap your brain around it, but you really don't have to. This game's so stupid that there's no reason to be thinking about it. I mean, basically all you have to do is run around the stage, jump into portals, collect items, and then use them in various ways. Now, since the game places portals in random locations, I can't exactly hold your hand and walk you through everything. Needless to say, you're gonna need to explore every portal and grab every item you can, save for three. The TV, the radio, and the empty box. Take any one of those items and the demon children will taunt you and eventually remove your inventory. Wait, so the game took away my inventory because I stole an empty cardboard box. Exactly. I just... I quit. I forgot, I can't leave. As you wander around the level, you'll find a lot of treasure chests with glyphs. You need to open every single treasure chest in this level to make damn sure you have all of the glyphs. If you're missing one, you won't be able to beat the level. So you get all the glyphs and the items you need, and eventually you'll wander around the level long enough to find Olmac here. And believe me, when I learned how to beat this first stage, I damn near had a brain aneurysm. You talk to the big giant Stonehead, who will tell you that he's the gatekeeper and is waiting for an offering. How do you know which offering he's waiting for? Well, you equip the mirror, and then look in the mirror that's already in the room. It'll show you the reflection of the glyph you need to select. Place that glyph down, and if it's the right one, the gatekeeper will say, Follow me to the Hall of Memories! Or some bullshit like that. This is where the game is downright sadistic. Throughout the entire first level, you were actually supposed to pay careful attention to those FMVs because the gatekeeper here will actually ask you trivia questions related to the vignettes you just saw. Select the dork you think is the right answer to the trivia question and you touch the flame of truth, the, uh, the blue torch that has absolutely no other function in the game, yet takes up a huge chunk of space on the HUD. I bet you thought that was just purely decorative, right? Wrong. But if you get it right, you move on. Chances are, though, that you'll completely fuck it up and die. And that's where the newspaper comes in. Apparently the developers knew that they created a mess of a game, so they put in a cheat. If you grab the newspaper in the cinematic where you're not allowed to grab anything else, you can use it here to find out which portrait is the correct answer. Okay, wait, so uh, a newspaper, which has already been printed, has the answer to a future trivia question asked by Olmec in a purgatorial parallel dimension. In a way, yeah. Ah! Makes no sense! Makes no sense! So you enter level two, and this is where the true misery starts. 
If you thought Periphery was bad, just wait until you have to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do in Purgatory. In this level, instead of getting objects from cutscenes, you get to choose who lives and who dies. The only problem is that you absolutely must know who lives and dies in the second Pumpkinhead movie. And if you don't, you're just gonna be playing a long, tiresome guessing game. There are actually only two people who survive that movie, Jenny and Jane. Everyone else has to die in order to obtain the item they're carrying. Because when people die in this game, they reappear in front of you dressed as a monk, and they hand you some useless children's toy, and they say, I hope you know what to do with this. Well, no! I don't! What the fuck am I supposed to do with a fire truck? What the fuck?! And you'll also have to collect their souls from the hands of destiny. This is boring and tedious. Of course, that's not all there is to this level. Oh no, sir. There's also... The Hell Room. The Hell Room. Oh yes, the Hell Room. You see, there are a variety of enemies in this level that, once you kill them, don't actually die. They're simply sent to the Hell Room. And, once you've killed all of them, this room is filled to the brim with enemies, making it damn near impossible to get through. And it gets worse. You know those lost souls you have to save? Well, every time you find one, it gets whisked away to the Hall of Purgatory, which is basically a cattle farm for souls. Go to this room, avoid pissing on the electric fence, and then capture the soul. After you collect all nine lost souls and all the items from the cinematics, fight your way through the Hell Room, or if you're smart, you went through this room once after every time you killed an enemy, to the Gatekeeper's Room. He'll tell you to follow him and then ask you yet another trivia question from the movie. It's here that you've got to look at your newspaper again to find the answer. Select the right answer, touch the flame of truth, and... Now you're taken to Pumpkinhead's lair, and it's here that you can finally end this miserable game. The only problem is that the requirements for reaching the end are random. By random, of course, you mean you can't explain it. No, no, no. By random, I mean if you didn't collect every single item from the previous level, this game will probably fuck you over. You have to watch two cinematics here. One of them where Pumpkinhead kills another person, and one where some random person explains what item you need to use to calm Pumpkinhead's soul. It can be any item you collected in the previous level. So basically, you make your way through the maze, jump through a couple of portals, get to the center of the place where Pumpkinhead has his domain, and then you give him a snuggling teddy bear, and then the game's over. You don't actually fight the end boss, you just give him a nice toy. Pretty much. Game's over. Can I go now? I have a crotch that I gotta take care of. Stop! No! You are not done yet! Oh god. What do you mean, oh god? What do you mean we're not done? We just beat the game! He's gonna make us watch it. Wait, watch what? <laughs> ah, behold the power of Pumpkinhead! Yeah. <sighs>